Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of uh, Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. I once again cannot get into my game. There we go. Okay, so we just got to the cleansing chapel. Um, Dropping frames. Okay, um, and so I've come back here to Firelink because there's a couple things that we are gonna do. Um, Hawkwood is gone again. Leonard is here. Now in vain, come on. Okay. Just talks about. Oops. Oh boy, that was risky. <laughs> um. Let's go see if Hawkwood is just out here now. Like I, as I say, when he's gone, does that mean that he... We have so much to do in this episode that I, I am just going to assume that it will take two or even three episodes. So we're just going to take our time here. Yeah, so he's just out here. The poor wretched be their lord or a sh Okay, so I didn't know if that would develop over time. I almost walked off the edge there. Alright. So we are gonna give Shrine wow, Maiden. Well met, fashion work. How may I Gracious, passing fine ash thou hast given. Let this ash bestow nourishment. I only hope these new wares content thee. <laughs> Alright, so now we have the Bloomin' Purple Moss. Potently, potently medicinal moss clump with a flower reduces poison and toxin, cures ailments. A toxin is a more vicious form of poison which quickly leads to death. Moss clumps without blooms are useless against toxin, and those who neglect to carry this flower, flowered variety are simply courting an early demise. Okay, so we have the Undead Hunter charm we read before, um, but now we have the Dual Charm. All Father Lloyd's knights lived in fear of his duels of judgment, in which verdicts were carried out by his sword of law. So it seems like all Father Lloyd's Knights had internal things going on. Like, it wasn't just they would go out on undead hunts, they would fight each other in duels, uh, and that that in some way had is related to a judgment or um, a, a, a ruling on uh, All Father Lloyd's part and his sword of law. It's interesting. We're going to buy the tower key, because we have the money for it, and we need it. So, I think Morningstar is new. Doesn't have much to it. Crescent-shaped halberd resembling a long-handled battle axe, traditionally wielded by way of white clerics. Now we have a canvas talisman. Medium for casting miracles of the gods, canvas talismans are austere items carried by heralds. Equip a talisman, blah, 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 and unfaltering prayer. And now we have an exile mask. This looks to be like the guy we fought in the crucifixion woods. Iron mask of the watchdogs of Farron Keep. After the Legion's watchers became lords of Cinder, uh, the wolf blood dried up, and Farron was consumed by a festering wood. Within the wood, an emaciated old wolf commands watchdogs to defend the sanctity of sleeping warriors. Both the exiles were surely watchdogs themselves, uh, for Farron has always been a land of itinerants. So yeah, that's interesting. So the Legion uh, became Lords of Cinder. We know this. Um, the, they were the Abyss Watchers. 
uh, and they all shared in the wolf's blood. But um, when they became Lords of Cinder, then uh, everything changed. And from that, there was a uh, an old wolf that um, that directed people to protect the woods, I guess. Enormous hat that completely obscures the face belonged to twin gurus known as the Crystal Sages. The pair are said to be successors to the great sage Logan, and this big hat is a symbol of their pedigree. I believe that. I mean, they were using like the white dragon breath and and soul spears and stuff. They were using new ones that I haven't seen yet uh, from Logan. Lloyd's shield ring, ring given to knights of the way of white, depicts All Father Lloyd's shield of cased. Much time has passed since the worship of Lloyd was common in the way of white. The clerics of Kareem had always strongly asserted that Lloyd was a derivative fraud and that the All-Father title was self-proclaimed. Uh-huh. And what does this item do? Boost damage absorption when HP is full. So that's interesting. And we talked about how, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'm not going to repeat myself every time, but just that this does lend credence to the fact that Lloyd is not necessarily a god. Um, he certainly could be just a, uh, a guy that self-proclaimed himself as a father. It also shows that the clerics of Kareem were um, either not from the Way of White or were a different branch of the Way of White where they don't worship Lloyd. But Lloyd was certainly worshipped by the Way of White. Which is, I think, you know, what we were talking about in the first game. We never s spoke that he was a god, but it certainly seemed like it. And we also know that he's Gwyn's uncle, who was definitely a god. Yeah, yeah, okay. wonder if she says anything different if you, uh... I guess we never spoke to Grey Rat when he came back. Oh, hello. You've come at a good time. Oh, it took some prowling, but I finally made a score. Go on. Have a gander. Okay, so, Divine Blessing. He found that in the Undead Settlement somehow. Holy Water blessed by the Queen of Lothric. The Queen of Lothric, married to the former king of Cyros, was initially rever revered as a goddess of bound fertility and bounty. After giving birth to Ocelot, her youngest, she quietly disappeared. What's this? The Queen of Lothric? So we know that, the, well, I didn't show it in my playthrough, but we know that uh, Guinevere who, of whose the Divine Blessing is usually referring to, ran off with flame god Flan and left Van Orlando. And so in this case here, it says that someone was married to King Osiris and was initially revered as a goddess of fertility and bounty. Perhaps the Queen of Lothric, this land that we're in, is Guinevere. But then even after giving birth to Ocelot, she disappeared. Where did she go? Man, so many interesting things. Lightning Urn. Dragon hunting to leaves by Lothric Knights. I think we read this. The Knights of Lothric have since tamed dragons, but were once hunters of dragons themselves. Okay, so that explains why dragons were all around the High Wall of Lothric, either dead or alive. Uh, Zweihander. Ultra great sword with a large long blade, wielded with two hands, yet still requiring great strength due to its weight. Execute powerful attacks that take advantage of its weight. And a stop. Pontiff Knight Curve Sword. Curve sword wielded by the Pontiff's Knights, frigid spirits that linger in Erethil. So we've heard about Erethil, we know about um, uh, the Boreal Valley. We also have heard about Pontiff um, because we got the Pontiff's left eye and it was Pontiff Sullivan 
So, um, so the pawn of left eye are the things that are given to the outrider knights that turn them into beasts. Um, so anyway, uh, curved sword wielded by the pontiff knights, frigid spirits that linger in your thumb. So they're not the outrider knights. The large blade appears to be eaten away by insects, making it lightweight but also brittle. Frost blade. So spinning but with frost. A stock. A uh, large thrusting sword for piercing armored knights. Sharp edge of the sword's rock solid blade. And then he uses a shield splitter. Mace. War pick. Is this new? Warhammer with a hard pr pronged head was originally a pickaxe, but sim this simple but deadly weapon is heavily with thrust damage. Spear, glaive, this halberd with a large blade was uh, a scythe refitted for battle. Spin sweep, short bow, and I might want to grab that at some point. Um, then we have the crossbow and a priest chime, sacred chime for casting miracles of the gods of the type given to Lothric priests. To cast a miracle, the caster learns a tale of the gods and says a prayer to be blessed by its revelations. The faith of the supplicant uh, affects the strength of the miracle. At the buckler, the target shield, that has four protrusions designed for brush attacks aside, making ideal for parrying. Maybe that's the best parrying shield because it's got four protrusions. Elkhorn, which they're so saying with Mira, of course. Round shield. Kite shield, knight shield, I think that's what we're using. Pontiff knight shield, shield of the pontiff knights, frigid spirits that linger in Aerithil. This blue-gray shield shrouded in a thinly cold air is light and brittle. I wonder, I mean, he didn't go to on the settlement, he must have gone to Aerithil. Clearly. Also, we know of another frigid land, Elium Lois. I wonder if they share any associations. Okay, so now he just gets all this stuff. Um, so yeah, these are not lower heavy, but he has a lot of um, arrows and bolts and stuff. You can keep the ring. Yes. Uh, yeah. Maybe. You can. Keep uh, Goodbye. Oh, this place is a ball. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> this might just be a loose ends video, man. Oh, you're back then. Again. I'm Orbeck of Vinheim, here to teach you sorceries. Let us begin with the basics. The ideal sorcerer bears the twin faces of the dragon. Mm -hmm. You could at least act as if you're paying Wait, attention. what? Are you talking? Okay, so he has soul arrow, great soul arrow. Heavy soul arrow, great heavy soul arrow. Then he has the fair and dart. And soul, great sword. The ephemeral blade only exists in an, as an extension of the caster, but its power is said to rival that of physical great swords. Even the most obstinate magic purist may resort to the spell. Okay, I think we might have read that. And then the fair and flash sword. Alteration of the great sword, soul great sword, developed by sorcerers of the undead legion of Farron. The legion has a tendency to emphasize speed over power, and this practical alteration of existing sorcery is no exception. Magic weapon, magic shield, spook. Sorcery developed by a certain surreptitious sorcerer at Vinheim Dragon School. Mass noises of the caster and prevents fall damage. Their mastery of this sorcery alone allows Vinheim spooks to demand handsome payment for their services. An oral decoy, sorcery developed at Vinheim. The sound carries with it a strangely infectious resonance that may cause one to stray from their posts and expose their back. It is folly to claim lives recklessly, friend. Do not be tempted. No matter the victim's stature, every killing has a consequence. Even as I bloodied my hands, I never realized this simple truth. I was the very definition of a fool. I don't mean to seem overbearing, but have you forgotten? 
In exchange for my sorceries, you are to bring me knowledge in the form of scroll detailing the secrets of sorcery. I hope you're not one to break a promise. I don't mean any Okay, so we have a little... We have a time limit on when we can get a scroll to him. But we'll be fine. Um, so... Yeah, we just have the deep tome. She doesn't have anything new. Uh, Cornix is not going to have anything new. I've thought about it. I do not want to upgrade my Aerithil straight sword because you can't infuse it, you can't do anything with it. Frostbite's nice, but it's not everything. Alright, and then we have to talk to... because I guess we've beaten a Crystal Sage, so... Alright, so... Unique sorcery developed by extraordinary preacher twins known as the Crystal Sages. Cast a cascade of small crystal soul masses from above. Crystal soul masses have piercing qualities. In a pact said to have been formed long ago, one of the sages allied with the undead legion in order to train the sorcerers of Farron. Aha! So now we know why Farron has sorceries. Um, I mean, I guess we could have assumed in a sense, but uh, you know, in this sense, it says there was a pact even, and so that's why the one left the Grand Archives and came to Farron. Um, thrusting sword with tiny crystals scattered across the blade used by the Crystal Sages for self-defense. The crystals boost the magic damage inflicted by the sword and the item discovery of its wielder. Now that's... if you want to get item discovery up you can use this item and just have it on your person. Um, fruits of the lifetime of research conducted by sages. That's interesting. Kind of lore with that. Um, okay. No Okay. I'm treat. All right. So, twenty minutes just to fire like man. There's just so much going on in this game compared to some of the other games. Speak thy desire, honorable lord. Oh, good hollow. I'm afraid I must say. Orbeka Vinheim is a cause of much consternation. He proclaimeth himself Lord of Hollow. Does he? If left alone, he may one day imperil thy rule. Fall to this matter yearly, else we are unraveled. Um. Decisiveness is the mark of a true monarch. More talk about a true monarch, Ken. Orbeka of Vinheim, if left alone. Okay, so Orbeck is trying to proclaim himself to be the Lord of Hollows. Like, when has that happened? Back again, I, I suppose this means I don't mean to take the back. Okay. Come again. Well, we could try to kill him. However, I think I'm gonna wait. And let the story play out. Alright, so we're actually not going to go up into the tower. We are going to go back to the cleansing chapel and we're going to continue from here. Alright. So. Oh, I suppose I should have, uh, I should have, uh, should have done this stuff off screen, but just get rid of all this stuff from my inventory because it makes it easier to read stuff. Do I need different Just miracles, pyromancies? Yeah, I think we're good. Bleed resistance, I guess. There's bleeding coming up here, although I have the best bleed resistance. 
that. But I don't know. So there's this obelisk here. We're gonna head down here first. So we're gonna try to take on these guys. Just if I get bleeding, or if I get hit by them. Yeah, no. Take a look on my body. You can see there's maggots on there, and it's causing my bleed to go up. But I can, uh, I can use a flame to get them off, and then my bleeding stops going down. So it's a very when you, unlike, the first game, the first couple games, like, it's uh, it's unclear what's causing your bleeding for a bit. And it only happens when he hits you. That's why you need a torch for this area. Saint Tree Belvine. This is from two Dark Souls Two. Sacred chime for casting miracles of the gods. A belvine cut from a small saint tree that has been meticulously attended to. Saint Tree Belvines are customary in the far north, Lindelt, probably, and allow for faster casting than ordinary sacred chimes. And gentle prayer is the skill. Twinklin. There's going to be an item somewhere that we're going to need the Twinklin for, so definitely want to get that piled up. There's a enlarged crystal lizard here as well. Probably a lot more difficult than the one we fought at the beginning, but we'll take our chances with them. Of course we get another Titanite scale. Um, I'm going to get everything here before we move on. Uh, I guess this is our way back. Um, okay, I think this is all. Is there nothing up here? Uh, okay, yeah, get up there. This is a shortcut later. It's an interesting statue. Don't really know what it is. 
But, uh, yeah, you can't really see, I guess. Oh, yeah, there you are. There's a long ladder you can kick down. There's a coffin here. Uh, I guess this is like a, a mausoleum or something. Okay, so let's go in here. I don't think this moves forward. Hope not. Aha, uh -huh, right. I do know where this is. So I guess they're just a bunch of maggots themselves. Interesting. Poison bite ring. It is nice you get the poison bite ring in this area, which protects you against poison. Uh, in another area of the world, and then you get the blood bright ring somewhere else, so it gives I mean, it's just like a nice way to uh, progress through. Um, one of the bite rings may have to Kareem. The crafting of, the ring of these rings is forbidden. Yeah, so the bite rings are whatever. Um, yeah, and there's no way up, there's just a way down. Like, this is a shortcut up here, so. Alright, so we're just gonna move on. back to the cleansing chapel and back up around. In fact, I've only used one, but you know, why not reset everything? Okay. the normal way into the graveyard. More crows. It's kind of a coolish area conceptually where all these guys like just emerge from the ground of this graveyard. I guess I could try to kill them. <laughs> They're not that hard. Some are hard, but not these main ones. I get the Astora Great Sword. Great Sword bestowed upon elite knights is a relic of the ruined land of Astora, ruined by the evil eye beast or whatever. Designed for a focus on thrust attacks, the sword is hard and sharp, but not usually unusually heavy. We can do a charge with it. Yeah, but just in general, like nothing in this area is going to be too bad for us, just because we have the we have protection against bleeding. that area. Is there anything here? No. Okay. Fading soul. Executioner's great sword. Those are the guys that we gotta care about, but like, again, all they do is give us maggots, so it's not like we can't handle them. Oops. <laughs> oh, they puke them up too. Interesting. Wonder if that gives you. Just want to see if there's anything down here. I think there is, but I'm not sure. Interesting, you can't 
Lock on. Looks like it was those arrows. Oh, they keep coming up. Um, and there's a white birch there as well. This guy going up. Okay. Gotta take care of this grave warden. I love how she can uh, she can hurt the other people. Whoa. She causes bleed as well. So yeah. So you can see uh, he's shooting from somewhere. Bone shard, yes. Yes, please. He's protecting the white birch. He's protecting us by the white birch. Not really sure why. I mean, we talked about it before, but. Okay. Not directly. Okay. back into the mausoleum at the top here. Grab this item that we saw from down there. And Curse Ward Great Shield, which looks like the Pursuer's Shield. Great Shield given to those who resisted the curse long ago. Far too heavy for an ordinary person. Um, perhaps it signifies the foolishness of resisting the curse. And yet those who bear the weight of this shield uh, will not find its protections against curses wanting. Okay, so it protects against curses. Now we can keep that down. We have plenty of uh, um, Estus, so, and our durability is not taking a hit. So let's proceed to what appears to be the actual cathedral. So once again, we have a non-hidden woman crying and uh, hiding her face. Okay, there's where go or whatever the giant is shooting from over there. That's the undead settlement. There's the bridge. There's the cleansing chapel. It's cool. There's more of these statues. Almost crow like, like they're wearing crow garb. Of course, that doesn't open from this side. We got more red, red bug pellets. Oh, because I walked into that. Okay. I got hit by an undead charm. There's a bunch of uh, places you can get. Um, ambushed from. These, these. Okay. 
these spikes. Oh, did he come down? Okay. Just allows me to kill you. So you can't bother me anymore. It's all these spikes in the ground. I don't know what these are. But, I mean, it looks like there's some building that's gone on here. These spikes are being laid out all in this area. Hmm. I don't know. some thralls in here too. Came here from the uh, There's probably a few items here I'm not going to get. Like um I think up there is like some like Avalon thing or some sort of bolt. Throwing undead hunter charms at me. There's another double. Oh. <laughs> it's like, even. Oh. Even knowing about ambushes in this game, you can't avoid them sometimes. the thralls a lot. More red bug, bug pellets. I believe this is the longest section of a game. Uh, between bonfires. So it can be a little bit, uh, I don't know, traumatic or whatever. <laughs> oh boy. Especially when you got thralls everywhere. Oh boy. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh. Yeah, I don't know what I was doing there. I was just like, okay, they all have one hit left. All this is going to need me to do is just hit them once real quick. Um, yeah. No, I'm not embered anymore.
Wow. I guess I should probably not have used that. I should probably just use one of these. Man. Please don't lose 20,000 souls. Ugh, the sword's not great for that type of thing, for sure. Yeah, and he comes out. Okay. Let's do this logically. Thralls. Look how many there are. Okay, at least my stuff is just right here. Ugh. Okay. Let's get back to where we were. Although, I probably should trigger this. Ambush. Come on. Okay, I'm blocking. Yeah, blocking really hurts these guys for sure. I should block more often. Okay, so what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm trying to trigger. Don't go back in. Ugh. I'm blocking. Wow. There's another one up here, that's why I wasn't trying not to... Oh, <laughs> and here. Okay. Just get out of my game. Okay. <sighs> Thralls. Oh, I thought there was something up here. Never mind. Was there a guy? Where is there a guy throwing? This guy? Ugh, I saw that one coming a mile away. Okay, so I want this gray warden over here. Before that one comes, okay. They're both here. Before these other guys come. Do I need the... Ooh. 
Okay. And again, before I trigger these guys, I don't know how. Oh, there I triggered. Okay. Thanks for the long sword. Oh, come on. Just feeling out of touch right now. Oh wow. Okay, can't block that apparently. Item out on here? Nope, not good. Okay, once again, Ferenc Keep. It's all just the same view, but it's kind of cool to kind of. Oops, no texture. <laughs> it's kind of cool to like keep revisiting it from different angles. More of these statues here. I have no Estus remaining. Okay, more of the crying woman. <sighs> I feel like I don't want to do this uh, ambush. Just get somewhere where I can open up a shortcut. Okay. Now this is the Cathedral of the Deep. It's got slimes in here. Poison statues. Oops. Still got it. Got these deacons. The red robes, similar to the one on Aldrich's throne. That first uh, shortcut open, I am going to call this at an episode. I felt like there was a uh, Titanite shard or something over here. All right, those thralls. All right. Oh, weird. Uh, I, <laughs> there's like a flaming guy in the background. I don't know why he was there. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll continue with the rest of the Cathedral Deep uh, next episode. Bye.